What's happening, y'all? This is Andrew from Mirror Music 99, back with another Grateful Dead reaction. This is an audience request from, I don't know, a few weeks ago now. Um, and it's, it's come up more than once, actually. This is the version of Eyes of the World slash Estimated Prophet, where Renfro Marsalis plays with them. So, um, I've heard this is a really good version. This is from the Nassau Coliseum, March 29th, 1990. Um, so we'll see what we got. Lots of things tangled up here. All right, here we go. There it goes. Ooh. Sounds like some Sade shit. Nice. I was about to ask when does he run for Marsalis show up, but the answer is immediately. Immediately he shows up. He's not up in the microphone singing yet either. It feels like Dave Matthews heard this when he was a young man and modeled much of what his band became after it. It has very much that feel. That must be a, is that like a Jerry Garcia thing? I've commented on it a hundred times, but where he kind of cascades down into the solo. Like, I feel like he does that a lot. I love that move. I've commented on it a hundred times. Uh, I guess I answered my own question. What effect do they have on the keyboards on that? It's a weird filter. The keys are just coming through this side too. Let Coop listen to this too. This is, he's a huge Sade fan. I don't know if he's just obsessed with her because of her voice, but like the musicality part of it sounds very much in that vein.
Grateful Dead don't need a saxophone player, but it is a good addition. This is nice. Like, this kind of jam with this kind of instrumentation, I mean, it's very late 80s, early 90s. And it could really easily devolve into elevator music, but it's not. It, or it hasn't, anyway. Yeah, take that effect off the keyboard. Play it, just play it like a piano. It's nice. See the bass is coming out now. It's always interesting to hear how they pass the solos around because they don't do it like a typical jazz band or a typical blues band where you hear like one instrument way in the front and everybody kind of pulls back. It's just like one comes up a little bit but still part of the group and then fades back, and one comes up a little bit and fades back. It's it's much more subtle. Y'all are not familiar with the dead if you're listening to this. Listen to the counterpoint, point counterpoint with the bass and the guitar right there. You don't hear bands very often that have both bass and guitar and keys to moving around as much as you hear here. And a saxophone too, in this case, but and where it all doesn't feel muddy, where it all feel feels like it kind of fits together, it's hard to do.
Is that a guitar pedal? I think it is. That's weird, man. I mean, it sounds like keys, but you can hear the keyboard playing too. The way the notes are being phrased definitely sounds like a guitar. Does those little moments where it like pulls you out of the just the flowy gym that it's just like a slap slap wake up not that you're asleep you know what I mean like just it's a change of pace guys thanks for recommending this this is amazing
don't know, man. Wait. This part feels kind of like we're living inside the music. I don't know how to explain that. I guess Deadheads would know what I'm talking about, but it's feels less like an external experience of experiencing music and more like an internal one, if that makes sense. It's definitely a stop start move to the next one though. As opposed to kind of like a live transition. Those of you who would know, is that like soprano sax or an alto? I know he plays both. And it is pretty typical for Jerry to sing one song and then Weird to sing another one, right? Like, it's kind of alternate. almost like reggae that beat right that kind of groove but it is kind of hilarious to have a reggae sounding song about California though like this part doesn't sound like reggae just the groove they were playing on the verse does See you about the 
Sounds like Jerry's got a lot of effects pedals going on this concert. like a different movement. It's like a middle eight or something. Is this song always played kind of with a reggae groove to it? Listen to that bass and saxophone going together.
It also has that groove, kind of like Papa was a Rolling Stone, too. It's a little bit of that, too. Are there more songs that Brent from Rosales played with them? Because this is... This is great. It's one of those things where... Like, most times when you have a guest appearance like this, they push that person to the front, and they have their moments, but, and then the band does what the band does, but, and this sounds great, but also it's like, this doesn't sound like a guest appearance, it sounds like he's actually a member of the band, and, and they've just folded him in, almost immediately, and, saxophone feels like it belongs there. One of the things I haven't brought enough attention to really in this series that I've done is the drumming. Like, the groove is nice, and it doesn't ever sound like there are two drummers playing either. There's a lot of percussion going on, but having two drummers can sound really sloppy sometimes. I was trying to cut two different grooves or whatever, and this doesn't at all. Like, you wouldn't, unless, unless you knew there were two drummers playing, you doesn't sound like it, right? You wouldn't know it, know it. This, I guess, is the exploratory phase of Estimated Profit. <laughs> First feedback I've ever heard in one of these songs.
Yeah, so I, I guess, I mean, I'm looking at the set list now, Dark Star is next. So um, that does explain also why they're kind of, why they would drift off in kind of, not ambient sound, but like more psychedelic stuff by the end of that is kind of drifting off. Um, and I know it's all intentional, and I know it's going in a nice little groove, and but but it feels just yeah like we're about to go off off the deep end, right? Which is what Dark Star is. Um, so yeah, super good guys. Thanks for for recommending this for me. This is it's going to become a running joke on this channel where every one of these is my favorite. But like this this was really 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 good. The saxophone feels like it fits. Um, I did want to say this too, like. So many people um, that I tell about the Grateful Dead as like a part of this new journey are like, I don't like that. Like, and there's because there's so many stereotypes about the band, about them being boring, about them having really simple songs, about have them having um, just repeating the same chords over and over, about them playing really long songs, about. Um, the drug culture about all that kind of stuff and there's all those stereotypes and i mean i, I can say this because i was one of those people right like i was i was like this is fine but like eh, it's not really my my thing and but just like i tell my <laughs> my little kids like you can't tell me you don't like to eat something if you haven't tried it before so I figured that you know what I'm I'm going to give it a shot and it's been it's been a really cool journey so far like it's there there's I mean they are basic song structures but it is remarkably complex um and there's so much going on and it's really helped me to have this group of people listening to me running my mouth about this and watching me make facial expressions while I'm listening to it to kind of help guide me as far as like what to listen to or what to listen for. It's, yeah, it's, it's a really cool, cool journey. Um, quick little sidebar too. Um, the same is also true for, I mean, this is, this is one of the motifs of the channel, right? Is that we want to expose people to music they wouldn't ordinarily listen to. Um, even music that you would normally think, people would normally think, eh, that's not really for me. Um, but actually, like, dig into it and, and experience it for real. Um, so, so when, so, to the deadheads among us, um, when I say things about hip-hop music and about rap music and when we talk about those kind of songs too, um, give it a try. Um, and it's not all going to be for you, um, just like all the Grateful Dead songs are not for everybody. But I really do feel like there's something in most music for everybody that you can like latch on to and, and listen to and enjoy if you know what you're listening for. So um, thanks for coming on this journey with us, and I'll see you all next time. Take care, y'all. Be well.